It's the penultimate game of tonight's PUBG EU Pro Scrims, everybody. I'm Jorasar, and we are back over Miramar. It's going to be one more time after this, so we're not going to say for the last time just yet. But let's find out what will happen this time around and whether or not Kitchen are going to reclaim the spot at the top of the leaderboards going into our final game of the evening. It's an Eastern skewed plane path this time around. We start in the six o'clock position, but very much go towards one, two o'clock. Cutting out drops towards places like El Pozo, Monte Nuevo, Chumacera should be fine, but will probably be a little bit far. Uh, San Martin is just about stretchable and Hacienda. So we should see some alternative drop spots there. A couple of early tussles for vehicles. It looks like Control will be able to take that one from April. And we've got the fellas as well as Exhalation going up north. But the fellas clearly moving towards Campo Militar. Control needing to get further away from there than that. Toxic players have got that bit of the map. That control didn't know it before. He certainly does now. Chased away, possibly to the south side of Los Leones. Win or die will long shoot into San Martin. Circle has popped. It's going to be northwest of Los Leones here. Stardust might find vehicles a tad difficult if they're this close to kitchen. Let's take a look at what the road looks like. Actually, we've got something over there. No, we don't. If they go... Hmm. If they go further in, we've actually got kitchen in and around El Azaha. So they have to be a little bit wary. They have got a lot of ground to cover, though. So uh, there'll probably be a vehicle somewhere for them. They just don't want to venture too far towards the urban areas here. Where else have we got potential disagreements? I feel like everyone is actually playing quite well together, if I'm honest. Um, Looking for controversy? Finding none? Chat, do you want to help out? Where are we going? Where are we going? Who are we looking at? Fellas relatively split. They're going to have vehicles for days, though, up towards Campo Militar. They've got uh, Tierra Bronca to themselves as well. Exhalation might actually make a long rotate in. They have the option here. They might try and zap in early. I feel like at the three and a half minute mark, being this far from the circle, they've already exhausted that possibility. But I can see them coming in long if they want to. Nail Cop relatively close to a member of Solo. I don't really think they're going to uh, bump heads, but he does know that he's there. He must have seen him a little bit early on. Uh-oh. 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 Can, can we, can we, can we just go? Can we go? Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Daz gets a reprieve there. Loosely defined. It's no fighting in zone one, guys. And uh, Celtics was basically getting crashed there. But a uh, couple of warning shots later, I think they go, okay, okay. That's fine. Let's actually practice getting into the mid and late game, which is completely fair enough. Completely and utterly fair enough. Toxic players split at the moment. Doesn't even matter. A lot of teams already inside zone. Exhalation. Let's find out where they end up going. A 
and not taking the long way around, it looks like they're going to have a significantly more direct route. Stardust coming in behind Kitchen. Trying to work out to what extent we're concerned about this. Possibly not just yet. Inside Lost Leonis now. I'm actually surprised that we have multiple teams in and around here. MTB haven't really moved that much. Solo have actually gotten a little bit more space inside Lost Leonis. Question mark just to the south. Navi taking the north side too. This is somewhat aggressive. Teams typically don't commit to going inside a city that early on because getting into a city is relatively easy. But getting out of a city is horrendously difficult. So it's much, much easier to not dive in until you absolutely have to. And yet we've sort of, kind of, got three. Like Navi skirting around the edges, question mark skirting around the edges, Booga skirting around the edges. But to have MTB and Solo so close to each other is unusual. Like, legit unusual. Especially because there's still so many possibilities where the circle goes away from Lost Leonis, right? That is far, far from a predetermined outcome at this point. Hello. Oh, no. Exhalation and Stardust. Having a go at each other. Beautiful headshot onto Salig. Doesn't quite get the finish, though. We try on BTM. Salik gets taken down by Metabay. That was started by Celtics. Wheel pops against BTM. That's two members of Exhalation down. They want a chicken dinner, but it could end there. Third partying, meaning it's important to try and secure those points now. Apocalypse from Stardust has gone down. I zoom coming back to maybe try and collect. Who on earth is... What are you guys doing from over there? That's after all. Oh my god. We've got Daz from Kitchen in on the action as well. Look how far from them these guys are. Absolute no mercy here. I zoom into boom. Cracking on as Stardust try and press home the numbers advantage. Apocalypse is down. Looks like he's getting revived now. Metabay's looking for something else. He won't find it. Celtics does though. Looks like that's a Molotov. Is he holding it? Yes, he was. But because he was holding it, I believe Celtics gets the credit for that kill. They go up to three. What else is happening? The fellas relatively open against win or die if they choose to push in through these hills. Goose Yara has a bit of cover and the fellas know where he is as well. These teams getting very uncomfortably close to each other. The tap nearly getting taken out by FaZe. In fact, there's still time if he's not careful. Spies hardcover goes for it. Seeks refuge in the concrete. 20 seconds till phase one closes. Uh, phase one hasn't been that bloody here, but it has been very eventful. In game number five. Very eventful indeed. And as you can see, the team's very much clustered. If this is anything other than a donut, we could be in for a wild ride, guys. Let's see. Ooh, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. It's northern skewed, uh, which means the teams in Los Leones that were on the edges are going to move out. MTB is not going to stay there. Question mark are going to 
probably rotate east if I had to guess. Booga, if they go quickly enough, don't have to deal with other teams inside Lost Leona. So they're getting the hell out of dodge quickly. This is all very, very civilized right now. You know what isn't though? Kitchen crashing into win or die. All right, here we go. Hyruzen's outside. Do they know that? Does Paige... Paige wants to focus on Gusiara. Hyruzen on the outside, though, gets purchased onto Squeaker. That would be the reason why he did that. And Paige goes down as well. This is a really good fight for win or die so far. Three clean kills. And Scav is alive. Could be Rezzing Daz. Gets a good trade onto Laos. The rest of win or die are pushing in excellent Molotov. Stopping Scav from moving any further in. Hops onto the sofa because they're, they're flame proof, right? They're flame proof, right? Clearly not. Out of the frying pan, into the wok, and out of the game. Kitchen eliminated very early on here. Laosh is knocked and flushed out of the game, but win or die, pick up four kills and the four points associated with it. Righty ho. What other crashes are we going to see here? The fairly open phase two. I expect to see a couple like that, but probably no more than a couple, if I'm being honest. Toxic players have been spotted by at least two teams as they start to rotate in as well. They started on the southern side of the circle and are sort of moving in a two o'clock direction past the corner of Los Leones. They could try and move further central. Julian's found a concrete compound that he's happy to take in the meantime. Don't blame him. Do not blame him. After all, oh, I bet you're not expecting to have to thread the needle when you're this far outside of zone as well. He had question mark on the right, Vorpal Swords on the left. Oh, uh, we have questions. We have, we have questions. Oh, dear. Sorry, we no longer have questions. Clem and Danny Mon are behind him anyway. We are fine. I hate driving the Murado on Miramar. Have I told, have I told anyone that before? Because I hate it. PWD finds and flushes Hibako. Not over there, because that one's still moving, of course. There we go. Right next to him. That's going to be a relatively safe loot behind the vehicle, although Kron coming in to grab his share as well. Maybe giving his teammate a bit of a lift. No, just kidding. The boom is traveling backwards. I have questions about this, but uh, it seems like he's managed to survive and get himself into a dip where he's no longer getting shot at. So I suppose you can't complain. You win some and you lose some. Zone two slowly finishing its shift now. Vorpal swords are going much further west. They should have a bit more space to play with here, and they've got some good uh, height and a good amount of cover to play with. But unless phase three is a hard shift, they're going to have to move again. Phase three is a hard shift. They're fine. Don't know what you're talking about, guys. Don't even worry about it. Cast a curse incoming and Tropic very much dead center. Uh, Twisted Minds are going to be relatively pleased with their position. Lou is going to have to move out ASAP. Oh, dear. You must be this tall to ride. God, it's much easier coming down than it is going up, isn't it? Woo! All right. Twisted Minds. Going to be gathering up, possibly 2-2 two, two split with Biesto Lodge there. They could also all gather up. We'll have to wait and see. FaZe Clan looking like they might want to give Vorpal Swords a little bit of a run for their money. 7-6-2. Ooh, nearly getting run over by his teammate there. But we'll be forced to go on the north side of the road thanks to the two tires that were taken out on that vehicle. To be fair, this is not a terrible position to be in at all. But you do want vehicles to get out. You don't really want to be getting out of here on foot. So I don't know how many vehicles FaZe still have that are usable, but that's going to become a factor a little bit later on. Stardust also getting to... Wow! You guys are so brutal at taking out tires in this lobby. Stardust versus Fago. The battle of the yellow teams continues here on Miramar. Oh god, Doxus has two tires. The front left and the rear right are both gone. His car's in a worse place than Celtic's, arguably. Hmm, this is, uh... This is alarm bells flashing for Stardust. Not sure how much they're going to be able to contribute here to a positive result if they can't get out of the current situation they're in. Let's see how they recover, though. There's always the possibility in PUBG.
I'm worried about this. Question mark are looking at Solo. They're looking at Solo with Navi how far from them? Yeah, Navi's heard this. It's not question mark I'm wor uh it's not question mark I'm looking at as the aggressors here. It's Navi. They're saying, are we getting shot up from behind? No, we can probably afford to move up this hill and third party then. Whether or not Navi are successful in doing this depends almost entirely on whether these guys decide to shoot Navi as they go up the hill. Bombilovo has been taken down. It's a trade. Both players will be able to get revived. It's behind that I'm looking at. Phil first by the vehicle. Uber and Alia. Once an angle, they get an angle. And that's Phil first down. Alia leading the charge into the rest of question mark. Sees Hober off in the distance. Says thank you very much. Hober's going, hang on a second. There's someone there as well. Yes, there is. It's actually Fairest with the barrel who takes him out. Spend too long aggressing and this is what happens. Alia, he's going down to the blue. Three damage a second. Beautiful headshot onto him and there's nothing Navi could have done about that. Maybe they're able to carry him back into the zone. I feel like he's technically resable if they really wanted to. The boom's going to be spoiler here. I think Alia's saying don't bother to example. Example saying I can do it. Oh my god, he really can. He really can. He really can. Oh, come on! Oh, the third party. Those shots, I think they're from Fago. They are from Fago. Dissuaded him at the last moment. Otherwise, Navi could have gotten everyone alive. Fellas in the south of Picardo shooting against Booga to dissuade them from coming down the mountain. Exhalation. And now in for the helpings that they didn't get before Daboom picking up their first kill of the game. Remember, they have had the chicken dinner here. So they'll take out another member of Na'Vi, leaving them as a duo. Down the road, Melman and Uber, they're looking for revenge. Don't quite... Oh my god, this is, uh, this is a hellish run. Win or die. Fago. Toxic players. Entropic coming up on the left as well. And somehow, Daboom is alive through it all. Everyone's shooting everyone else, except Exhalation. We're going... Yeah, I don't know how long you're going to survive there, mate, but we'll give it a go. We will absolutely give it a go. MTB out in the blue. Eski has some decisions to make. And I am afraid they're not going to be particularly pleasant. After all, in Vorpal Swords, they're in circle. But this is a rather exciting fight. On the west side, relatively close quarters. Booga are pushing into win or die. They're pushing into win or die because if they go behind them, they fight against Fago. And Fago have got a lovely entrenched position inside circle with hard cover. Really tough for them to win this. But Uga Booga facing outwards stand a bigger chance of winning this fight. And if they can get some kills as a result, they will take them. Kusyar and Extens are both down. Hyruzen is in the smoke in behind. Uga Booga have the opportunity to go up to a minimum of three kill points here. Just the one so far. And that's what we were talking about, Fago. Can you imagine Booga coming up and trying to push this warehouse with the blue on their back? It's going to be difficult for them indeed. And that's why they were doing this. Unfortunately, I feel like their life is in the blue now and there's really not much more they can do. Hyruzen had his head just inside that vehicle window trying to get a last second headshot onto Vard. They both spot each other. And this is a mutually assured destruction situation. It's a question of whether one player is going to get the point at the expense of the other, but that's about it right now. Hyruzen and Vard going for it. Vard blinks first. Hyruzen does not. And there are no more first aids here. Are we going to loot them? Nope. We're going to eliminate ourselves with a self a Molotov. Delightful stuff there. Might as well go out in style. Oh, after all. If Mad does this, it's going to be so impressive. Gets one! Miracles happen. Excellent Molotov, but he should be able to insta-heal. Ooh, 
insta heals if he goes down and gets another knock. Tron gets revived after being carried to the side of the building. Corporal Sword's playing this so smart. They're like, yeah, we could rush in, or we could just revive everyone and let him keep using his utility. He's actually moved away with the bike, but it's only one player on it. riser has gone into blue. Oh, he's grabbing a vehicle. Okay, because that's that's chunking, dude. Dude, that that is a chunk. That's a chunk and a half. Okay, he knows what he's doing. Woo! PWD is waiting for Mad. Mad here's the second vehicle as well. Is this going to tempt him out? It has to. This is the gambit that Vorpal Swords are gambling on right now. And that's after all eliminated. The point denied in the blue. I think he knew that someone else was still waiting. Outthinking each other there. And Tropic getting aggressive on them. Both Toxic players and FaZe Clan at once. Now both of the latter teams are coming from the low ground. FaZe Clan decided, you know what? It's probably better off for us if we take out the team aggressing before we go up and clean up in Tropic. That might well be true. Julian just gets a first aid off as he goes down to about 1 HP from that grenade. Follow up nades from FaZe Clan. Take him down again. A good Molotov. I think that hits him. That should spread to a point where it hits him. It somehow doesn't. No, okay, it does now. There we go. Toxic players eliminated. FaZe Clan now know they are safe to move up against the rest of Entropic. Seven teams alive and 20 players at the 22-minute mark of this game. QB and Evas on the receiving end of this. Numbers depleted. Deciding to retreat to the brick building to try and avoid them getting wiped out and give themselves a defensive opportunity against FaZe Clan. FaZe do not want them to get set up here. They are aggressing relentlessly and Evas getting 762 at the outset. Good flank by Gustav will immediately trade. One more. QB versus the world. Evas down and out. Dragon Pump, we're going for the reses first. FaZe Clan want to have all four up. They're happy to play this slowly. Flashbang comes out, but that's assuming they're pushing in and they're not. Gustav is holding an angle, but that's it. They're getting both of those reses up at the moment. They're doing just fine. QB down to 1 HP. This is about as intense as it can get. The fellas third partying the hell out of this one and twisted. Twisted minds. They're not waiting. This is FaZe Clan versus Entropic. They know it and they want to gate crash this party. Gustav and 762 still down. QB holding on for dear life. If QB died earlier instead of going down to 1 HP, this fight would not be happening. FaZe Clan would have just won that and it would be the end. Twisted Minds would not push into this, but because they know the fight's still ongoing, that makes this very interesting indeed. Another frag grenade coming out against Spyro. Trying to delay them coming in as long as possible. FaZe Clan now fighting on two different fronts. Both of them going for the high risk, high reward play. They're both resing a teammate right now. They need to get back up to four ASAP if they are to survive this fight. QB still alive on the first floor going, <laughs> you guys have fun third partying. I'm just going to sit here and collect all of my placement points. Thank you very much. FaZe Clan back up to four. High risk, high reward. One more frag grenade to delay Twisted Minds just a moment longer. It's worked for them, but now they actually have to take the fight. Twisted Minds need to bear in mind that this is outside of zone. Dragon Pub going for the high risk play. It doesn't work. Twisted Minds should be able to move in now. Lou comes in off the top into the window from the balcony and FaZe Clan are eliminated, but really good effort there from FaZe Clan. I love that they had everybody back up to try and play their part in that fight. And I love as well, the Twisted Mind still managed to win that with all of their players alive. The question for me is not whether QB survives, it's whether they survive the fellas coming in over the top of this though. Remember the name of the game in PUBG is to be the last team alive. So if you can be the last team into an engagement, that tends to help quite a lot. QB spotted on the top floor by the fellas, but it's really the ground floor and Twisted Minds that they are worried about. 
brace from the fellow where they're playing bodyguard to entropic right now is what's happening the twisted minds unfortunately a little bit too much to take on three teams at once cubies into the top three easy as you like thank you very much and tropic eliminated as well and the fellas doing an incredible job here to clean up really good timing on that engagement and not for the first time today the vorpal swords are involved in the final fight three of them are up and alive versus the fellas it's a 3v3 to end here Let's take a look at what the situation looks like from a utility standpoint. Kron is a level 1 vest and no frags. Riser, no frags. 3 vest, bit damage though. PWD struggling with vest and helmet, no frags. Okay, so utility not great, but... But, 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 but. Let's see what happens on the other side. No frags as well for Rustenmar. 3 for Smash, actually. And a fresh level 3 vest is not bad. And none for Clib. So, it's going to be an interesting finish. Both sides would wish they have more utility than they currently do. A lot of this is going to come down to first frag. Kron playing Rustin more perfectly so far. Oh dear! Kron wanted to get the drop onto Rustin, Ma. Smash did not allow him to do that, but he's on one HP. That fight, if you played that out 10 times, I reckon they win five of those each. That was about as hairline as you can get. Vorpal Swords down to two, but that was close. This might be less close though. Clip attempting the drive by Smash from up top. PWD getting the critical hit onto Smash to make this a 2v2. Really, really important that one of those flanking angles went down. Rustenmar and Klib left for the fellas. Fighting against Vorpal Swords. They want this chicken dinner. They play the slow, strategic, methodical game. It's worked out for them. Riser crests over the edge just as Rustenmar turns his back. Doesn't get punished for it, though. We'll be able to come in for round two. Spotted. Is it enough? Rustenmar has no vest, by the way. His level three vest is gone. It's now a 2v1. PWD and Riser versus Klib. And Clip's position is very much known. Spray's coming out from distance. That's three hits. Make that four. And the Vorpal Swords with six kills, ladies and gentlemen, will take home the chicken dinner in game number five of tonight's PUBG EU Pro Scrims. Congratulations. Very, very hard fought victory there. In second place, we have the fellows with eight kills. And in third place, Entropic with four. Very, very even kill distribution here in game number five.